Thank you. Are you guys ready to get started? Yeah. So who here already has uh, WordPress as, as their primary website right now? Good. WordPress. So WordPress, <coughs> if you don't uh, know, is, is a blog. It, it is also your website. Okay. Some agents like having both. Um, myself, I can I pretty much uh, remove my traditional website. I only use WordPress now. And I'll show you an example of, of what my website looks like a little bit later on. It has all the functionality of a traditional website. They can call you. They can uh, contact you through your website. You can add pages. You can add links. You can put videos and pictures and any, anything that you would like to do, except it takes the whole aspect of coding out. Okay, so anyone that how many of you all use y'all use Facebook, right? To some extent? Yes. If you can use Facebook, you can you can do WordPress. It is that simple. Okay. So I kind of compare WordPress to being Facebook with all the additives of a Word document. Okay. It's pretty much that simple. You click the button to add a picture, click the button to add a, a video, you click a button to make a link, a hyperlink, right? So it's very simple to use it. Um, what we'll be going through today is how where to get started. WordPress isn't. Uh, you can use a free version. I don't recommend it. I recommend getting the paid version. It's, I think, less than five dollars a month. Okay. You own your own content. You can do whatever you want with your website. That's why I highly recommend doing it. Um, and then we'll also be talking about how to create basically your first page or your first article of what you're going to be doing. And I'll be explaining those those two differences. Um, at the end of the class, I'll be doing an introduction, a part two that we'll have here, I believe, next month, Larry. In two weeks, okay. In two weeks, sorry. Um, WordPress Pro. WordPress Pro. <laughs> Just going into uh, a little bit more detail and giving you some of the, the bells and whistles of what WordPress can actually do to make your website uh, function a lot better for your user and look a lot better for your user. Okay. So, any questions before we get started? All right. So, the agenda: uh, purchasing hosting from GoDaddy. The only reason I recommend using them is because they're probably the simplest to do. Uh, they have 24-hour support. You can call them day or night. They'll pick up the phone and they'll help you out with any problem that you have. You can use whoever you want, but this is who I've used in the past because it's extremely easy, easy from the beginning to use them. Okay? So GoDaddy is going to be your hosting company. Not to get that confused with WordPress, but you are buying your own personal space for your website. Okay? Um, We'll be talking about how to set up that hosting account. It's pretty simple to do, um, but just taking you step by step on how to do that. If there is some things that you do need to be aware of when you're setting it up. Uh, then we'll be doing a live presentation with the uh, navigation of WordPress. Okay. Um, there's not a whole. When you first log into WordPress, you'll see that there's quite a bit of menus, and as you get more robust with your knowledge of WordPress, you'll see a lot of buttons similar to mine on there. Won't be confusing because eventually you'll start learning how to use all these different tools. But it's actually very simple. Okay, um, creating your first post or your page. Like I said, those are very similar, but I'll explain the differences on those. And then at the very end, we'll do an introduction to part two, which is plugins, themes, video, and a lot more other trickier stuff that you can take advantage of with WordPress. Yes, sir. Number one, you don't have to pay your web developer $500 to update it every time you have a new article you want to do, um, or you know, like an $8,000 tax credit that was around. You would have to pay them, you know, X amount of dollars to remove that from your website. Uh, you get a new listing on your website. You want a specific property page for it. I highly recommend doing that. You'd have to call them, and that'd be another couple hundred dollars to do that. Um, any of the good websites that are out there that do do that. I know Z57 is probably the leading marketer right now. Probably a lot of you probably know them. They're thousand dollars a month to get it, and then, or sorry, a thousand dollars sign up, and then they're like a hundred keep it going. If you want to do the uh, Craig Proctor, I forget what they're called, and but those are I think 150 a month, okay, to have it. So 150 a month, you don't own your own content, or five dollars a month, and you can do whatever you want with it, and you can you'll be you'll have the knowledge to be able to use it. Okay. As as the WordPress is the best. Um, just last week, I got hit up for a client that wants to sell his house, standard sale, 
didn't get the listing like I said. He wants to go for a sell by owner now, but he'll get frustrated himself in a couple of weeks, and I'll I'll get the listing. So I'm not too worried about it. But that's that's the benefit of having it. Um, right now, I can actually show you at the end of the class where the majority of my traffic comes from, and I'm going to say something around 60 to 70 percent is directed by Google, not paid advertising, just people looking for things on Google and they find my website for it. Okay, I rank very high. Um, Google, Google, Google loves WordPress. The, the main thing with WordPress is you're constantly updating it. Okay, and for Google, this is this is the the main thing for Google. There's a lot of other stuff that goes with search engine optimization, but this is the main point. Google wants fresh content. Okay, because what are they in charge of? They're in charge of directing eyes, our eyes, to good content. So if it's good and brand new content most recent. That should probably technically in their eyes be the best content for you to, to be directed to. So if I type in first time home buyer down payment assistance in Los Angeles and I just happen to write or there has to be happens to be a website that just put up an article a few days ago and it got indexed, that's probably going to be my number one result. Okay, there's, there's another a lot of a thousand other things that take effect, but that's the basic gist of it. They want good, fresh content. Okay. So they don't want stuff that's copy or copycatted from another website, copy and paste. If you want to do that, take a screenshot of the article and then write it in your own words. Or something I do uh, is I take a screenshot, put it on my website, I write it, and I'll make a video for them to play it as well. Because we'd all rather click play and hear it than read it. I would say that's uh, how, how many of you would agree with that? Do you watch the news or do you read it? You read it? You watch it? Who watches the news? I would say most of us probably watch the news and that's it. You're, you're the 1%. <laughs> no. And you're going to be able to help us. The purpose of this is for you to be able to do it. For you. Not me. Just you guys. Yeah, I, I used to do that. I don't do that anymore. So, you, I think uh, as John said, thank you. It's, it's very simple. It is very simple. Ready to move forward? We're good with the SEO? All right. <clears throat> so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to get your hosting account. So where are you going to get it? Like I said, you can go anywhere, but I recommend GoDaddy.com because like me, as technical as I am, I lo I'm, on, I'm a phone guy. I want to call them, give them my credit card information over the phone. I don't really trust the Internet that well. That's just me. Okay. So I call them and, and that's where you go and buy it. After you have everything set up, or sorry, when you're calling them, you're going to ask them to set up a WordPress hosting account for you. Okay. Now that WordPress hosting account is going to take around 30 minutes to, to populate on their database. Okay. So that will mean you, you got to wait about 30 minutes before you can actually start doing this next step. Okay. But after that 30 minutes, that time has elapsed, you're going to go back to GoDaddy. You're going to go to login. You can see the arrows. Okay. Your next screen is going to look like this. So you're going to click on all products. You're going to hover over hosting and servers. And then down there on the bottom right hand side, it says management. Okay. And that'll there's kind of a few steps to get to where you need to go, but this is this is the navigation. Okay. Once, this will be the next screen that you hit where it says a minus sign. There will be a little plus sign. So we all know plus means to expand. As soon as you click that, this will be what you'll see on the back end. Now these are two different – I don't know. You can't see my mouse. Those are two different slides. It's the top one and the bottom one. So after you expand it, you're going to click on the big green button that says launch. Okay? And that's going to open up into your dashboard basically for your hosting account and all that. Okay? So after you have that opened up, Bottom right hand corner, or sorry, top right hand corner, bottom right hand corner of the screen, it'll say application. You're going to want to click on WordPress. Okay, that's what we're going to be installing onto, a, onto your server. How much is Free. That's why I recommend WordPress or GoDaddy because they do everything pretty much for you. You don't have to download it and do all that. You don't have to do any of that. Okay, so as soon as you click on WordPress, it's going to give you this next screen. You're going to click on Install Now. Very hard, right? The next 
when you're buying your, your website, of course you're going to have a domain name, so you're going to select the domain name that's going to be your website. So ours is the excellent fuel. Yours can be Lilia Estrada Sells Homes, Larry Homes, number one broker, flipper in Los Angeles County area. Extraordinaire, sorry. <laughs> so whatever you want to call yourself, call yourself that. Word of recommendation when you're picking out your domain name, I would recommend using your name in it because that's what people are going to be looking for later on. Also, I would recommend, even though it gets a little bit long, you know, Jonathan Villascusa sells homes. Jonathan Villascusa real estate. You want those keywords in there, again, for search engine uh, optimization purposes. Okay, don't make it too long, but you know, maybe Jonathan V sells homes because my last name is real long, and they'll probably misspell it anyways. Okay, so something, something simple. Yes, sir. Okay, so people on the webinar, the question was asked the preference between .com, .net, .co. How many of you go to a .net website on a daily basis? The only one I would probably recommend getting besides the .com is the .co, just in case they typo and forget the M, they'll still get put to your website. But I find each of those .co's, .net, .org, that's all different websites that you have to market now. So unless you're really getting advanced with, hey, I'm going to put this domain name on this on this form that I have and see how well it works. I'm going to put this domain name on this form and see how well it works. Unless you're going to be that huge in marketing, I only recommend using one. Okay. And search engine wise anyways, I would recommend using one. This is how Google, one of the other parts of what they look at when it comes to, to ranking you. You have two websites that are getting 50,000 hits a month for, for first time home buyers in Los Angeles and you have one that's getting 100,000 hits a month for first time home buyer in Los Angeles. Which one's going to rank higher? The 100,000 because he's getting the most hits. Okay? So if you had 10 websites and you each get 10,000, consolidate it and get 100,000. Okay? Google looks at a lot of different factors and that's one of their main ones is, is how much traffic you're getting per month. Now don't expect 100,000 hits a month. That's actually a, an extremely hard number to hit. I average about maybe 2,000 to 3,000. 3,000 is a really good month for me. Okay. As you start off, you'll probably only have, I would say, less than 500 hits a month. Okay. Don't get discouraged. It's just going to take you time. It's like when you went out farming. You farmed and you farmed and you farmed for three, six, three four, five, six months before you actually got a listing. Okay. This is the same thing. It just, it's going to take time. Okay. So bear with it. After you select that, you're going to go ahead and click. I clipped off the next button, but it would be next in the bottom right-hand corner. All right, three arrows, these are three things to do. So your database description, this can be whatever you want to call it, okay? But when it comes in there, it's just labeled WordPress, and that's, why what I would, that's probably what I'll leave it defaulted to, is WordPress, okay? Uh, next, you're going to have to create a database password. Uh, with these passwords, you have to keep in mind that these websites that are on the Internet, you can log into them directly through the website. So you want to pick a, a password that's very strong, has uppercase, lowercase, and special characters. Okay. GoDaddy by default automatically makes you do that, but I would recommend writing a pretty lengthy and complicated password so that your website will never get hacked, and it does happen. People have had their website get hacked, so you, need, you don't want that to, to happen. Okay. So with that part, click the little green, uh, orange next button. Now install into folder. Because I already had WordPress on mine, I didn't want to mess up my site. So I put WordPress test, but what you're actually going to do in that box is leave it blank. You're going to install it into the root directory. Okay? So if you do this and you, by accident, you forget this step and you put WordPress or WordPress test, your site will not be able, you, if you go to excellenceduo.com, it won't populate because the website is excellenceduo.com slash WordPress. Okay? So make sure you leave that box blank on this page. Very important step. Leave that blank. And you can see it down there. It says, "Warning: uh, WordPress, blah blah blah, is uh, uh, into an existing directory can override existing files." So if you accidentally do it, I mean, my, on my end, it would have erased all my data, but on your end, you'll be fine because you'll have nothing there. Okay. Click on next. 
Now here's some other things that you're gonna have to do. This configuration is for your WordPress, okay? So the, the admin name, okay, you can use capitals but don't use spaces. Okay, I, I would recommend putting Jonathan Villascusa and put the capital on the J and the V on the J and the V, but no space. Okay? All together, yes, all together. You can use the capitals but keep it all together. And then your password again. It's going to ask you to use uppercase, lowercase, special characters, and numbers. Make it complicated and put it in a safe place. You can use the same one. I would recommend using different ones, though, because you don't want, like I said, you don't want anyone to be able to fully get into your data. Okay. Uh, the email, this is the email that will be used for any and all leads. This could actually be changed later on, but for beginner purposes, put the email you want any lead that you get going to. Okay. So any questions they ask about listing their house or whatever, that's the email you want on there, okay? And then your blog title, I kind of put a long one in there, but this is kind of what you want, another part that helps your website rank. So Anaheim Real Estate by Jonathan Villascusa, search homes for sale, check property values, and blog with people in your area. Okay, so I'm hitting all those keywords, my name, real estate, homes for sale, search homes for sale, check property value, right? So I hit all those big keywords in one spot, okay? It's a lengthy title, but Google is going to love it, okay? Good with this part? Because mm -hmm. I think this is pretty much it with, with the hosting side of things. Okay, so WordPress. <clears throat> so after you go, to, after this is done, this, this I believe is going to take anywhere between 24 to 48 hours after you're done, done with this part, okay? So don't expect to be able to log right into your site and check it out. It's going to say under maintenance or whatever the little thing says, but, that, but that's how it's going to be. So it's going to take you a couple of days before you can log back into your site. Now when you log into your site, you're never going to go to GoDaddy.com again. You're going to go to ExcellenceDuo.com, your domain name. Okay? You'll be able to log in right from the home page of your website at that point. Okay? So at the bottom right hand corner, it, it should say something similar to WordPress admin or login. Uh, mine's changed because I changed my theme, which I'll get to in part two. But it's going to have the same thing. It'll say login, WordPress admin, whatever the case may be. If it doesn't work or you can't find it, you can always do this. Your domain name dot com forward slash WP dash admin. Okay, and that'll give you your login screen. Okay, so if you wanted to hide this, you could. But if you have a good password, it doesn't matter. Okay, and everyone that has WordPress knows that that's the directory to log into your website. Okay. Good with that part? Okay. So after you click that button, this is the next screen that you'll see. That username that you made where it said Jonathan Villascusa with no spaces, that's the username you're going to use on this part. That's your username. Okay. Your password is the same password you wrote with your username. Okay. So keep them, write those down and keep them in a safe place. Okay. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't recommend your computer to remember the password either. Okay. You don't want, if you're, for any reason your data gets hacked, you don't want to have lose control of your website because you probably will have to shut it down. Just a warning, a disclosure. Here with this part. And so now the rest of this class is going to be done on the Word, WordPress platform. Take some good notes of this stuff. Everything is good. Any questions on the webinar? Any questions here before I move on? Or I'll get, yes. Okay. The question was asked, "What if you have HostGator?" Honestly, I should change my ho my hosting to GoDaddy because HostGator is a little bit quicker than GoDaddy hosting. One reason I recommend GoDaddy is because they are simpler to use, and I've just been lazy myself. I don't want to back up my site, have downtime, reinstall everything, and I, I just don't want to deal with it right now. But if you already have it, you're good. Okay. Yes. Uh, you have to use on GoDaddy. No. 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 You don't have to use capital letters now. You just what, however you want to type it. Okay. I just do that because I um. What, is, what what do they call it? A like per yeah anal. There you go. <laughs> I'm a perfectionist, or I try to be at least. So. By the end of the next class, this is what your website should look like, at least kind of, sort of. 
Okay, this has been, keep in mind, this website is about two years I've been building it now. Okay, you, you can make it look like this very quickly. It can take you very long. This website is going to be going on forever and ever and ever until the next best thing comes out. And right now I don't, I don't see anything even in the mist that's even, in, even populating close. So um, this is basically your, your layout. So this is a plug-in up on top, which I'll get into in the next class. Um, you can click all these different buttons. You can make nice little movements like that with it. You can put video. Nice other plugins right here for people to sign up. This is your post right here. Okay, video. Another plugin that I can show you in the other class. Um, a mortgage loan calculator. This is actually one that I really like. Um, you can set the defaults on this, and you can say, okay, uh, you're, you're going to do a mortgage, so the purchase price. Is three hundred thousand. They're going to do three and a half percent down, thirty-year loan. Blah blah blah. All they have to do is hit calculate, and look how beautiful this looks. And this costs nothing. Give it a second. They'll, yeah, they can do this all on their own. Yeah, this is all. All this information is what the user sees. I'm not even logged into my website just yet. So look how beautiful that looks. It calculates the payment, how much interest they're paying, principal, taxes, all that stuff. It's. It's a very beautiful thing. It makes your website look like you spent thousands of dollars on it, and it's really just costing you nothing but the five bucks a month in your time. Okay. Where is that accessible from? Uh, in the next class, I'll tell you it. It's, I forget what it's called. It's it's mortgage loan calculator. There's a thousand of them in, yeah, in WordPress, but you just gotta kind of look for it because it's it's called mortgage loan calculator on in WordPress plugin on that section. It's just a widget, yeah. All the coding, all the hard work is already done for you. All you do, just like WordPress, you just click install and you're done. Very simple. Okay, and then you can do some other nice things. This is some stuff that people are finding in Google. This is how they find us. So Los Angeles Times logo is a big one that they find for our website, Los Angeles Times, Facebook, California Down Payment Assistance, so on and so forth. Those are all big keywords that are being found in Google from our website. I have Facebook on here so that people can like it, see what we're doing socially, for partners, and you can have the list goes on with, with your blog posts. Okay. And down here at the bottom, again, like I said, you have your WordPress admin. Like I said, WordPress admin up on top. Okay. All right, Fern, thanks for that for that for that uh plug in. I'll check that out. All right, guys, so after you log in, this is what your dashboard is gonna look like. <clears throat> Mine's a little bit more cluttered because I have a bunch of plugins already installed on my website, so yours will look much simpler. But at the end of the next class, yours will be just as complicated as this one. Okay. Um, so just for today's class, the only thing that I want to show you which is probably going to be your primary function with your blog, okay, is the post. Okay, there's also, like I said, the pages feature. Actually, I should just show you really quick the difference between those two. Okay, a page, basically the main function of a page is it will never show on your home page. Like you saw all those articles that I've written, those are your posts. Okay, those are things that you're writing as time goes on, as days go by, okay. The page feature of your of your blog is basically for the website functionality of it. Something that you want always there that's never going to really get old. Okay, something you'll, you'll probably never change. That's what you want a page to be. So contact us. I'm probably never going to change that page. That's a page. My home search pages. I'm never going to change these. Okay, so they're always going to stay the same. Um, my home buyer, home seller, foreclosure agent, seminars, all that stuff has new data constantly being poured into it. So those are your posts. Those are the things that you want to be on here. This isn't real, this is work related, but not really. Uh, this is our our introduction to the, our red carpet event coming up. Um, saving the California Dream, the Homeowners Bill of Rights, the bill that was just passed by Jer Governor Jerry Brown. You wouldn't want this to be a page. This is an article. This is something that you're writing. This is the blog feature of it. That's what you're going to be primarily doing. 
Okay. I took a video from Fox LA and, and, and slammed it on there. And then I have my event here, I have my expired listings, recorded seminar, everything in there, pre short sale negotiations at our office. The list goes on, okay? Got the difference between those two? Okay. So go ahead and click on post. You're going to go to add new. This is why I said uh, it's going to have the basic, basically it's going to be Facebook because it'll have all of the, the ability to go viral with Facebook and Twitter and all of that nice stuff. But you'll, the way you put it together is as easy as putting together a Word document, okay? So let that load. What template is it? This is just WordPress. Oh, okay. I know what you're getting at. What I'm using is called thesis. That's the theme. Okay. I'll talk about that in part two of this class. But yeah, I know what you're getting at. Okay, so enter title here. So this is going to be whatever your article is about. Okay, so if you're writing about, I don't know, let's say, um, Inventory dropping in California. That's a good one. We're, we've dropped inventory by about 70% from last year to this year. So you, so you can say inventory going down by 70%, home prices on the rise expected to go up 10% over the next six months, or whatever. You want to be descriptive with it. As, put as many keywords as you can possible in there. Even though it's going to be long, when people click on it, it's just going to be a link. They're never going to type in all that stuff. You're building this part of it for Google. Okay. So if Google sees all these different things, you know, your title is uh, real estate in Southern California or Anaheim, and then you write another article, inventory low in Anaheim, down 70%, home prices expected to rise in Anaheim. You keep hitting these same words over and over and over again. That's how you get better ranking within your website. Okay? It kind of sounds a little bit like spam, but that's what Google wants to see. Okay? Um, so for this instance, we'll just put um, home prices, Expected to rise in Anaheim, California as inventory plummets. Now, I always recommend putting a picture with your article because nobody really likes to read everything. They want to be visually stimulated. Okay, um, so you'll click on Upload Insert. See a little, you saw the little picture icon, right? Did I do that too quick? You got it? Okay. Very simple. Select Files. How hard is that? Now you do exactly what you always do. Browse for your file and you upload it. Uh, I'll just put a, a blank one in here. Let's see. Yes. Yes. Just find any picture that you want, click it, choose it. Okay, we're all pretty familiar with this. It's like attaching a, a file to an email, right? Pretty simple. Okay, there's our picture. Make sure to Label your picture, okay? Again, for your search engine, okay? You want to make sure that it's all search engine friendly. You want to keep attacking that same keyword phrase, okay? So whatever I wrote, even though it's kind of long, just put it again, okay? And you're going to put it as your title. You're going to put that same word as your alternate text. And then you're never going to, you don't want to put a caption, okay? That's going to put a little border around your picture and it's going to have that caption in there. The only time I've actually used a caption is when I've used pictures that aren't mine that I have copyright and you know wording on or whatever. So I've taken them and I put you know property of blah 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 and I give the source and all that. So I'm fine on my end. So that's the only time I recommend doing it, and I've only done it one time. Okay. Um, otherwise, you'll leave the caption blank, and then the description is just so you know when you go into your back end of this because you are uploading these pictures onto your server, your WordPress server. Um, you'll be able to know what picture that is instead of having to click one by one to kind of look at it. Okay. Um, next part would be the link URL. 
just click none. You don't want this picture to do anything. You just want it to be there so it looks better, basically. Okay. Now your alignment. This is completely your preference. The way I like it to look is my picture this way, or sorry, for you guys it would probably be this way. My picture right here and the text to flow like that. Okay. I don't. You can do it the other way. You can do it however you want, but that's just my my personal preference. Okay. So you can put none. You can put the left left text wrap center or right. Okay. I probably wouldn't do center because it's going to put the wording all kind of funky. But left or right is probably the the best way to do it. And then your size, more than likely, you're going to want to put medium. Okay, and that's how you see it right here. That's the medium size. So it's pretty perfect. As you can see right here, that's that's the left wrap. That's what I like. Okay, so if you did right, the picture would be on the other side and and flow that way. So however you want to do it, it's completely up to you. And after you're done, you go and click on insert into post. I have it on HTML settings. So you click on visual setting. Sorry about that. And there you go. Your picture is now inside your article, and now you're ready to type. So how do you start typing? Click on your picture. This is what I always do. Click on my picture. I push the right arrow. And actually, what I sorry, what I do is I copy this, and I paste it there again. Okay, so I have my main keyword focus again inside my article. Kind of repetitious, but that's what you have to do. Okay. Uh, there's also a rumor, nothing proven on this, but I do it anyways, just in case, that if you bold your keyword or keyword phrase within the article, it's supposed to help you rank higher with your search engine results. Now, there's no proven fact for this, but that's what some of the internet marketing experts say. So I recommend doing it at least one time, just to make sure that if it does work, at least you're getting that extra, you know, percent boost. For your article, okay. So very simple. Push enter, and now you can start typing whatever article you wanted, okay. Um, what you also want to do throughout your entire entire article of this, <clears throat> make sure to use the word price is expected to rise, and use report use use that keyword phrasing. You don't have to use that whole phrase the exact same time ten times. You can use parts of it, and as long as it keeps matching up with those keywords, you're going to rank higher. Okay, so the list will go on however long you want it to keep it going. Okay, I'm not going to put any more in information in there. But that'll pretty much be it. You're saying yeah. to rewrite it, don't cut and paste it. Do not cut and paste. You'll be neg you'll be negatively indexed if you cut and paste. I don't know if, if you cut and paste from your own let's say notepad or something. Oh, you can do that. I'm saying like if you went to the Los Angeles Times and you had a great article, don't copy and paste that and put it on your website. Oh, no, that shows extra tags on it. Yeah, you don't want to do that. Okay. Um, Google, I believe it's about three years ago now, changed their algorithm, and it affected 11.8 percent of search results. J.C. Penney's was one of the biggest ones that had no business being on top of the search results for many items, and they were just because of the way that they had it set up. But they, you couldn't find J.C. Penney's in the search engines anymore. The way that they changed it, um, and a lot of it is, this is one big one. And the main reason they changed it is they said, well, I'm a small guy, right? I only get 2,000 hits a month, but the Los Angeles Times gets millions of hits a month. Okay? I write a great article about whatever in, in Southern California real estate. Los Angeles Times likes my article, copy and paste it onto their website, and because they have more traffic, they're going to rank higher than my website, even though I'm the original creator of the content. We would say that's not how it should be. The original creator of the content should be the one ranking the highest. That's what they've changed. So if you copy and paste it, you're not going to show anywhere in the search results. Okay, you'll be so far down that nobody will ever click on your link. They won't get that far. Okay, so word of advice: if you like an article and you want to copy and paste it, don't do it. Copy it into a Word document and put a screen side by side and rewrite it all in your own words. Okay. A lot of what blogging is, anyways, is all uh, what is it called? Speculation, commentary. You know, people people hear what you, what you think about what it is. They don't want to hear the facts. They want to hear what you think about what it is. Okay. Um, so write what you you know. A, little, a new bill is going to pass. Like I said, that homeowner's bill. I put in my speculation of how I think the market's going to turn. In theory, yes, it's going to be great for the market. Right? It's going to delay the foreclosure process. Homeowners are going to keep their homes longer. I think it's going to be false. You know, it's going to delay the foreclosure process. 
and the banks are going to be more preemptive to strike in the foreclosure proceedings because they can't do a dual tracking now. Okay, so if, I don't know if you know about that law that passed the bill. Look into it. So, you know, that's what people want to hear. Whether it's good or bad, that's what people want to hear. Okay. Um, so good with that part? Okay, so we're done writing our article. And like I said, we'll get into the trickier stuff later on, but that's the, that's the basic gist of it. And now we're going to go to add a new category. So you can see all my categories here for what I'm doing. So I can put it in home buyer, right? I can put it in, uh, I don't see what that, I don't have a, maybe in home buying 101, right? Because this, this has to do with home buying. I'm also going to put this in home seller category. And I'm also going to put this in um, home seller tricks and strategies, right? Because this probably pertains to them being able to get more money for their property because they're expected to increase. And I'm also probably going to put this in agents. And I'm also going to put this in uh, prospecting, right? Because now if the agent knows home values are going up, that means more, more than likely more sellers are going to want to sell because they get more for their house now. So it makes sense. It's, it works out. It's, this is pertinent for agents, sellers, and home buyers. This tells the home buyers, hey, get off the fence and, and go buy a home. This tells the sellers, hey, get off the fence and go sell your home. And it tells the agents, get out of your office and go prospect to get a listing so you can sell a home. Right? Three different categories. Now, what you'll see is if I publish this, if I click on home buyer, or you know what, I will, popul I will publish this just, just so you can see it. Give me a second. The next part of this, what you can do is tags. Okay, your tags are kind of keywords that link this content to other content throughout your website. Okay, so if you have other information related about home prices increasing, maybe you did a, you pulled a chart from, uh, what's that website called? Uh, a Realty Track or you did a CMA or whatever. You you have some if you have some information, you can put uh, you know home prices. prices rising, uh, sellers, home sellers, home buyers, agents, listings. These are all basic keywords that pertain to this article, right? Okay. So what you want this to be able to do is they read this article, they say, oh, you have great information, but they're not quite ready to be sold on what you're, what you're offering in this article. So this gives them the option to find other articles based on what you're tagging through this function. Okay, very simple and easy to do. So after you're done with that, you click on Add, and there's all your tags for what you what you would uh, think is most related to what you're writing. Okay, and that's pretty much it. There's, oh, I should talk about this. No, I'll talk about this one in the next class. This is a little bit more advanced. Okay, so good with this part. No questions. I don't want to leave anyone behind, so there's no dumb question. Categories, okay. For the categories, you can create them on the back side. There's a button for it. Sorry, over here where it says post, you can create categories. Or if you're going through like we just did, right, you can click where it says categories, add new category, and add it right there. Now in the advanced class, I'll be showing you how to make that stand out more prominent. But just for the basics, just be able to how to write a post and get it up on your site, okay. That's the basic function of, of how to do that. Okay. After you're done, you click on uh, publish. So collect co connecting to America Online. <laughs> There is. I'll, I'll cover that all in the advanced class. The advanced class is going to be all the plugins that I use for my website, how you find them, install them, and, and put them all to work. Okay. So all the, the ergonomics field design of your website, that's going to be part two. So part one is in two weeks. Talk, talk, talk to the extraordinaire back there. Okay. So after you publish your website, you'll have these couple of links right here. So what you can do is go ahead and click on View Post. You'll be able to see your whole article entirely. Okay, so this is the exact page 
on your website for this article. Okay, you don't see anything else, just that one article, that one post. Click on the home page. You can see that's my most recent publication, my re most recent post, so it's on the main page. That's what Google wants to see new content on your main page. Okay, now I said this is also related to home buyers, so you can click on home buyer. Voila, it'll be in there too. I can also click on home buying 101. It'll be in the category home buying 101. Okay. So you kind of get the idea. I'm putting it in multiple different places because it kind of pertains to all different walks of life of people. Okay. You want to categorize all this stuff as much as you can because when Google goes to look at this stuff too, they're going to follow it the same way we just did. Okay, this is relate this is excellentduo.com, home buyer, home buying 101. Okay, and all those meta all the stuff I have on the back end, all the metadata, which I'll talk about in part two, is all related to it. So it's going to take everything I have into consideration when it indexes its its stuff on its website. Okay. Um go back go with that part? See how the navigation works? Okay. So I'm gonna this to trash. I don't want this on my website. I'll jump into the I'll jump into the category because we have a little bit of time. We finished a little bit earlier. Do you guys get all that before I do anything else though? I want I want this to be like rock solid my next class. Yeah? Right. Pretty simple. Okay. So we'll move on to categories. So under posts, there's a category tab. Very, very easy to do. So the name of your category, how you want it to appear on your website. This is how we see it, okay? So if this is about home buying, boom. Home buying. Okay, very simple, short and sweet to the point. Okay. Now a slug, this is the URL friendly version for computers. This is what computers see and read. They don't want to see capitals or spaces and none of that stuff. So for the computer's sake, you're going to type in home dash buyer. And if you can look on top, that's how everything's always written with links. It's always going to be lowercase, there's going to be dashes, no spaces. Okay, it makes it for a much cleaner uh, permalink. Okay. Now if this was uh, going to be part of another category, say this is home buying 202, and it's, I want it to be part of my home buyer category. Well, I just select home buyer, and now it's going to be underneath that parent category. Okay, so you can go home buyer, hover over it, and home buying 202 or whatever will be there now. Okay, but if you want this to be the primary, you're going to say none. This is going to be the primary or the parent category. Okay, everything else will branch off of home buying which this will probably be your main category. Everything else will be associated with this one. You know, loans, down payment assistance, featured properties, you name it, that's where you're going to put this type of information. Now your description, just so you can see, this is that, and just so you see this, this is a paid plugin I use to increase my uh, capture, lead capture rate, and I'll talk about this one on the next class as well. Okay, but, um, so you can see the description. See the little pop-up that just came up where it says, it'll say home buyer information about loan programs, how to qualify, become a VIP buyer, home inspections, terminal reports, buying bank repos, blah, blah, blah. And all the keywords, I'm kind of just stuffing them in there. Okay. That's what you're going to put in description. Now your SEO title. This is where you're going to get creative and it's still going to look pretty for our eyes. So instead of home buying, you're going to put uh, home buying in Anaheim, California, or wherever your market. So if you're geographically targeting just that one city, this is a website just for that area, that's all you want to target, put the city in the state. Okay, so when anything pops up with home buying in Anaheim, California, you're going to rank higher. Okay, now I'm kind of broad, broadly advertising, I'm doing Southern California. Okay, however you want to market your website, it's completely up to you. You will get better results the more descriptive you are, but keep in mind you're also filtering out other as well. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Now your description, you can go ahead and copy and paste that down into the meta description. Okay, so the description, meta description, just copy and paste it. Okay. Now your meta keywords, 
this can go on and on forever, and I'll give you a, a free tool where you can go and get a uh, free tool report. It's called Google Keyword Tool. I don't know if any of you are familiar with Google Keyword Tool. Just go to Google and Google that, Google Keyword Tool, that phrase. It will take you to their, their keyword analyzer, whatever you want to call it, and say you're focusing on home buying in Anaheim. You type home buying in Anaheim, and it will give you hundreds of different keyword phrases and keywords that you can just copy and paste right into there. So you don't have to go home buying in California, home buying in, in Anaheim, California, home buying or buying a bank repo in Anaheim, buying a short sale in Anaheim. You don't have to sit there and think of them all. It does it all for you. Okay? And you want to put as many, like I said, as you can in there. So if Google, when Google does come to your website and they do go to index you, all these different breadcrumbs of information all match up. Okay, it's like putting a story together for Google. Okay, everything needs to match up. Make sense? Okay. How you know how many of these people are? Want to see? All right. Like I said, I will show you guys. So you're gonna. This will also be in the advanced class, but it's called. It's through Google Analytics. It's a free service. Okay, you can create an account with them. It's absolutely free. It will give you a little code that I will show you how to install on your website in the next class. And this is a, a beautiful thing. It has gotten better. This is how I, when I first built a website, I was just using the old website, wasn't using this. I still need to do a lot of improving on this website. Um, but I was getting around 2,000 to 3,000 hits a month on the website. And my average time on my website was less than 30 seconds. So I said, wait a minute, why am I driving all this traffic to my website? If as soon as I get there, they're already leaving. Think of it like this, put a timer next to your, your computer and set it for 30 seconds. How much can you really do? Do you really feel you can read something, be stimulated or amused enough or intrigued enough to leave your information with me or give me a call? Probably not. And even with my website now, I don't feel it's enough. The average time on is 40 seconds because I get a lot of search engine out of it. My website, my rule of thumb has anywhere between three minutes to six minutes of time. Okay, think of it kind of like uh, an ad call. Somebody calls you on the phone. You want to be off the phone getting an appointment in three minutes or less. On a website, you might have a, six minutes is probably the maximum, even for an ad call, the maximum you could be on the phone before you're going to lose them, because otherwise you're giving them away too much information. Okay, now the downside with a website is you have to give away as much information as possible to get found in Google. So you really don't want to leave a whole lot out. Okay? Um, but that's, that's basically it. So you can see here, I'll show you uh, my traffic sources so you don't think I'm lying. Overview. All right, so search traffic is 46% of my results, almost 47% is directed just by search engines. The next 21% is referral traffic, Facebook, Trulia, Realtor.com, Craigslist, anything with a link going back to your website and they click on it, that's a referral. 22% uh, of my traffic is direct, meaning they went www.excellenceduo.com or whatever. Okay? And then the next 10% of my traffic is derived from my email marketing campaign. Okay, so I get to see full reports of everything that I'm doing. So I know where I need to put the gas down at, where I need to improve at, maybe where I don't want to improve anymore, and I can stop doing that. Um, so these are all things that you have to take into a part with what you're trying to build. Do you want to attack search engines? Do you want to attack more of your referral traffic? What do you want to attack? What is your best interest? You know, what are you good at is basically what you're trying to get to. Okay? And the nice thing about this is it tells you. You know, if you want and you door knocked 10,000 doors and passed out 10,000 flyers and you got 50 phone calls, that's great, but you don't know if the other people looked at it, maybe what they're interested in. There's other things behind the scenes that you're not, you don't get. All you know is 50 people called you. Okay? So this gives you a lot more in-depth knowledge of, of your website. You can also see, um, sorry, let's see here, uh, content. Uh, so we'll go to, let me see if I can do this. I haven't been on here in a, in a while, so hang on one second. Site content and all pages. Let's see if this is the right one. Okay. 
All right, so here we go. So you can see out of my home page, which is this little slash line, okay, that's my home page. I have 345 page views, which is a, an inflated number. This is me coming back to the to my website within, within the same 30-day period, okay? Because this is what the the graph is set for for 30 days, okay? So what the, what you really want to look at is the unique page views. This is one IP address. That's it. That was logged in for that 30 days. So I had 294. I had my average time on site for my home page is six minutes. So the average time on site is probably a wrong number because out of 300 people, I'm hitting 300 or sorry, six minutes of time. That's not bad. Okay. Um, next page of my that's my highest page is uh, my down payment assistance. I get 153 hits on that, and they're spending two and a half minutes on that page. Not too bad. Okay. These are all things meaning found through Google. Um, and you can keep seeing the list goes on and on and on and on. Um, there's one more part I want to show you on here. Graphic sources again. All traffic. Sorry, I haven't been on here in a, in, a, in a little bit, so I'm a little rusty. We're going to go to advanced, advanced segments, so you can see where people are spending time and where you need improving once again. So you're going to look at your three main things, referral traffic, your search engine traffic, and your direct traffic, right? So you can click search, direct, referral. You can apply that, those three different uh, values. my time on site. Yeah, I, I, I can't figure out how to do it. I'm sorry guys. See it is on all traffic. So is there any way to analyze uh, you mean? Let's say you you're putting content on here. Looking for you mean? Yeah. Okay. So back to the key, Google keyword tool. Type in your Google keyword phrase, and it'll give you the number one search. I, I haven't done this in a while, but it'll give you the top searches ranked by popularity, and then it'll also give you that same search ranked by uh, number of other websites that are using it. So the way you want to look at it, if, is there, if there's a keyword phrase that is getting, say, 10,000 hits a month. Okay, people are looking at it 10,000 times for us, being searched 10,000 times a month. And there's less, and I want to say it's 20,000 search results for that Google keyword phrase, you have a very high chance of being the number one search result if you do an article based on that keyword phrase. Okay, so you want to, if getting, getting very analytical with it, you want to be precise and do your homework before you just write an article. Okay, yes, you well, will get found. Will help guide you. Exactly. 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 Yeah. Yeah. That Google keyboard tool will help you do that. Once, once you do that, you can go to uh, that's content landing pages. And these are your top sites that are found through Google or wherever. And it gives you how many visits, pages per visit, average seconds, and how they're found. Okay. You can see all of it there. Make sense? So it'll show you all your different keyword phrases or whatever you're you're targeting, it'll show you all of that. Like I said, I need more help. So search it search results are getting found with the down payment assistance. 141 times, but they're only staying on the site for 17 seconds. So I have to refine my content. So this is all going back to making everything bigger and better. So you, you'll make it all, then you'll refine it. 
and you'll make it all again, and you'll refine it again. It's going to take you a while before you find it. Yeah, that's exactly it. So this, this, it'll show you all the detailed analytics of what you want to see on the back end. So I know it's a lot of, this is a, a huge class in itself to learn how to understand these reports, but it's another key thing to not just building a website, but making it better. Going from kindergarten to college graduate, basically. Yes? I would use a .com. Most people, without looking at your card, they're going to automatically dis and, and dis instinctively put .com. I do it even though things are .org, like car.org. I mean, you really have to think about what you're doing to put that, because you always want to put .com. You always want to put right, it. I want to make a comment about the .com. <laughs> Blah, 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 dot C-O. Oh, you mean C-O-M. Dot C-O. It's still like, it didn't go through, you know. They just don't want to put the M on there. It's just been around so long. You know, it's, it's just second nature to us now. We automatically and instinctively put it. So, yes. What page are you, or how are you capturing your information? That's part two. I have contact forms on my website. And I also have pop-ups that are built for different pages, different users. I have a pop-up for home buyers, a pop-up for home sellers, and a pop-up for agents. All in WordPress. I mean, uh, Part two? No, no. There's all kinds of different ones. Most of them you can find. I'll show you really quickly. My understanding is that they have literally I would probably almost say millions by now. Yeah, work for to go to your plugins. If you want to jump ahead, you'll you'll go to plugins. Yeah. You go to add new, and you'll just simply search for them. Now, if you don't know the name of the plugin, what you're looking for, type in what it is. So, if it's a home calculator tool, put uh, home loan calculator or finance calculator. Or whatever you're trying to find, what you can think in your head, put it in here, it'll probably find it. A lot of this stuff for me has been a ton of trial and error. Yes. I do. I do. Yeah, yeah, that, that contact form seven is just a form that makes making your contact forms very simple to use and for you to be able to get instant email notifications as soon as they happen. And at the same time, they, you get an, they get an email saying, thanks for responding, somebody will con be contacting you shortly, blah, blah, blah. So a lot of this stuff, like I said, is trial and error, but I'm, I'm giving you basically the, the golden nuggets of WordPress all in, in one class, so you don't have to do it. But uh, one pop-up that I will recommend that you guys check out is Pop-Up Domination 3.0. It's a paid plugin. It's 50 bucks, I think, for it. But you get so many signups for it. I've done a lot of things where I say, sign up now in the next uh, 15 minutes and get my free blah, blah, blah. And I'll make that pop up. As soon as they hit my website, it's already prompting them, sign up. And it has that contest of whatever I'm doing right there. So they just put in their name, email, they signed up. And then in the next 15 minutes, I already have my campaign set on autopilot. So as soon as they sign up, if they've made the cutoff time, they'll make it and they'll get the email. If not, Sorry, you didn't sign up in time. Stay tuned next time for our next, you know, 15-minute giveaway or whatever. I think I've gotten about 30 people signed up in about 10 minutes by doing things like that. And it's very simple stuff. It's called pop-up domination. Pop-up domination, yes. And they they let you do all kinds of different things. You can put videos in your pop-up. You can put like what they call like ebooks. Say you're getting like a home buyer ebook for free. It'll show the book, nice little. It'll make it look really nice and it cost you 50 bucks, yeah, but it takes all the hard work out of it, and it just makes you look 
really professional. I mean, I could show you um, one-time fee. That's it. Yeah. I'll just show you um, really quick what it kind of looks like. You kind of seen already what it does look like, but there's a bunch of different ways, like I said, you could do this. And this is a main component of how I uh, how I capture a lot of people's information. Here's one for uh, two agents. Go to launch preview. That's my pop up. So the way I have this pop up set, just so you know, it's on a timer. So if they're on any of my agent pages, right, WordPress, Facebook, any of that marketing stuff that only agents are probably looking at, after they're on my site for 45 seconds, this will pop up, prompting them, hey, sign up, get access to all this different stuff. And that's, to me, that's probably the time frame that would be appropriate because they're looking around, they probably read an article about halfway through, and they're, if, they've, if I've intrigued them enough, I feel they're probably going to sign up to get, to get access to everything that I do do. And I, get, I would say at least anywhere between 10 to 15 agents signing up a month just because of this. Okay, so not too bad. You know, growing at an extra 120 a year organically just off this besides all of my seminars and everything else I put on. Okay? That's one of them. So let's say I want to change the way it looks. I'll go to new template number one. I believe this is the one with the video. Oh, no, it's not. Let's try template number four. Okay, here we go. So we'll launch a preview on this. If I could change it so it could look like this. Access, blah, 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 and I could put in a short little video. Hey, notice that you're checking out all of our stuff for agents. If you want to be the next top agent in your market, you need to sign up for this list. Real quick, simple, 10, 15 seconds long. Making it that much, again, more interactive and friendly for your users to sign up. So you can, like I said, you can change this a thousand different ways, however you want. Um, with this pop-up, it really makes it that simple. I mean, you could have it on my home buyers and home seller tabs. Click the, hover over the X button. It will pop up, hey, don't forget to sign up. Notice you're leaving our page. Kind of annoying, but it's that one last give me for you to get them to sign up. Okay? And if, the idea is most people on the Internet, they're not buying right now. They're buying three to six months down the road. So if you can capture their email, stay in contact with them through your email marketing, which you should be doing. If you're the only one doing it, which I almost guarantee you will be, you're going to be that agent that they contact because you've been sending them all the great information, all the new updates with the housing market, home prices rising, new loan program that just came out, blah, blah, blah. You're going to be that first point of contact. So. All this stuff will be in the advanced class, but just so you can get a little flavor of it. And then uh, Michael, right? Peter, sorry, Peter. I don't know why I said Michael. Um, this is this layout, the way I have it, is all done through thesis. That's a theme. We'll talk into that. I'll show you how to put videos on your website just like this in the next part. Um, and then all these different widgets down here and plugins like uh, let me click on a page so you can see it. It is thesis is a paid. It's a one-time fee as well. There's a dozen free ones out. I mean, sorry, there's thousands of free themes out there. Thesis for me is the easiest to navigate and use, and works the best also for the search engine. Okay. This is the GoDaddy.com. Uh, Five bucks a month, Five, or less. I think it's less now. I think I just paid. 62 bucks for the year for all my email hosting and my domain name. So it's, it's a small investment, but I mean, it's an investment that we all need to make at one point or another. Um, so another one that you can do, this is one I, I really like, is gives you all the options to share to Facebook. So I'll share my content from here, and then it shows the number of times that it was shared, tweeted, right, uh, liked on Facebook, how many Google Google Plus ones it got. So you have the ability to take all your content viral. And on one of them, I think I had like almost like 60 shares on Facebook and a lot of tweets. And just really, it makes you feel good at the end of the day because your people are sharing your content, so it looks good. And you're also knowing that it's not just one person that's looking at it now. It's the potential of, you know, if, I, if 10 people 
shared it with 5,000 friends, that's what is that, 25,000 people with the potential to see your article. That's a lot of exposure that you could get. So that's what your, your goal is. That's what, that's what your mind trade is set at. Any questions? So, no, I do them all. I put them all home buyer under future properties and home seller, uh, current listings and past listings. So, sorry, did you see what? Could we see your listing? Yeah. There's our most recent one. If you click on it, I have the virtual tour for it. First and then exactly. Okay. So you can see the video virtual tour of it. Again, you could share all the contact information. And then down here, you can see related articles. And it's pulling everything that would be uh, you know, uh, a listing at that point. Because hey, if you're looking at this, I might be interested in buying this home, or whatever the case may be. Okay, and then this is another plugin. You know, you'll be able to comment directly to your website and share it simultaneously on Facebook or on Twitter. So your users, this is really what you want people to start doing, is commenting to your blog through this, through this pl uh, plugin called Discuss, probably the easiest one to use. And as they write content to your website, which helps you with Google because there is now new content on your site for the same thing, right? it also shares it to all 5,000 other friends or whatever. Okay, so you're, you're really hitting two birds with one stone. So a lot of the stuff that I'll do, um, just like with the uh, – I'll show you really quick. There's another plugin if you ever just want to do giveaways, raffles, you want to do something that creates a lot of excitement really quickly. Our red carpet that we have coming up next month on August 23rd, we're giving, we're doing raffle ticket giveaways. And there's a hundred, you get as many entries basically as you want. There's a hundred of these raffle tickets that'll be given off, and you can win more than one. Okay, um, but you have to. I'll show you really quick. This is the, what it looks like. So there's total entries, 21 have been entered so far. So I'll leave a blog post comment, so you have to, it's on an honor system a little bit, but you say, oh, I commented, so you do that, done. Tweet about the giveaway, so um, paste in the tweet URL, whatever you want to do on that. So it would be, you know, at, so this is my thing, uh, get your free drinks for red carpet event. Pound, excellent. You will, anyone here on Twitter? One. So if you know the Twitter language, you, this is the kind of thing that you'll want to do. So boom, now I tweeted it. I'll follow on Twitter. Okay, so I've already done it, but you can just click follow JJ Viascusa, which is me, on Twitter. Okay, I followed on Twitter. There's another. That's what. My name. I have a fan page for Excellence Real Estate, but everything you want it all funneling into you. I mean, you are your company. That's how I kind of look at it. So the list goes on. You can keep doing this. And like again, this is all to spread it virally, and it makes more people more enticed to sign up because now they can get free drinks in a red carpet event. They don't have to buy, pay for anything. Is that it? I think we got to shut it down, but you can ask me at the end. So thank you guys on the webinar.